Okay, here's another even numbered problem from your book. This is number 24 from section 7.3. And this is the other scenario we could have where we're asked to use law of cosines. And that's where we're given all three sides, but none of the angles. Okay. So I'm going to just draw myself a picture here. I am going to notice that the longest side is 58. I'm going to put that opposite the biggest angle. Remember, the significance there is that the biggest angle is the one that I don't know whether it's acute, right, or obtuse. The smaller angles I know for sure have to be acute. So if I put A here, this would be 28, this would be 47, and this is clearly not to scale. I didn't worry too much about trying to make it look perfect. I just like to have a place to put things. Okay. Notice all of these are to two significant digits, so I'm going to be finding all of my angles to two significant digits, and that just means to the nearest degree. Okay. All right. So, first thing I'm going to do is find angle C using the law of cosines. It is significant that I am finding angle C first because I know that's the biggest one. I want to find the biggest one first using law of cosines because remember, knowing the sine of an angle isn't enough for me to know whether it's acute or obtuse. But knowing the cosine of an angle is enough for me to know whether it's acute or obtuse. Okay. So, if I look at the law of cosine, it's C squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times cosine of c. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this for cosine of c before I plug anything in. Okay. So I'm going to subtract over the a squared and the b squared. So c squared minus a squared minus b squared equals negative 2ab times cosine of c. So cosine of c will equal c squared minus a squared minus b squared, all divided by negative 2 times a times b. And I'm going to put that in parentheses, because any time I've got a bunch of arithmetic that I'm doing on the bottom of a fraction, I need to make sure that that's in parentheses, because if I just type in the top and then I hit divided by 2 and times a times b, it's going to divide by 2, but then it's going to multiply by a and b, and that would move it to the top. So, very important, any time there's arithmetic inside of a fraction, there are understood parentheses, which you sometimes have to tell the calculator that they're there, around the top and the bottom. Usually what I'll do is I'll equal out what I have on the top so that I don't have to physically type in those parentheses. I'll just type in c squared minus a squared minus b squared equals, and then I'll hit divided by but I'm going to need parentheses around that bottom. Okay, so let's see. I need some more space. So, cosine of C is 58 squared minus A squared was 28 squared minus 47 squared. There are parentheses around that, although I'll probably just equal that out once I plug it in. Super important parentheses are around the bottom over negative 2 times 28 times 47. Okay. All right, so my calculator is still in degree mode. That's important. I'm going to type in 58 squared minus 28 squared minus 47 squared. I'm done with the top of the fraction, so I'm going to equal that out. Okay. All right. And I have 371 here. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to hit divided by parentheses. And then negative 2 times 28 times 47. Close the parentheses. And then hit equals. I get about negative 0 0.1409, blah, blah, blah. One thing you might want to do on exams, I don't want to have to enter that in again to my calculator, but I might just write down that I got negative 0 0.1409, blah, blah, blah. That way, just if you make a mistake plugging something into your calculator, that makes it a little bit easier for me when I'm grading to follow, oh, you were right up until this point, it was a problem taking the inverse cosine. Or, oh, you were wrong at this step, but you took the inverse cosine correctly. Okay, so I'm not clearing my screen, but
but I'm going to hit shift cosine. That gives me the inverse cosine function. And then I'm going to use my answer key. So it's going to plug that answer in to inverse cosine. And I get 98.10 blah, blah, blah. We said we were rounding things to two significant digits, so that's just to the nearest degree. Oh, nearest degree. That number is smaller than five, so this would be about 98 degrees. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to record my answers over here. So C is 98 degrees. Okay. Now again, in theory, it would be best to use law of cosines again, but this is so much more tedious than law of sines that we're going to allow ourselves to use that calculated value of 98 degrees uh, and use law of sines. And the direction said we could find either A or B next. Because I found the biggest angle, I know both of these are acute, and so it doesn't matter which of them I solve for next. I'm going to just find A. So I'm going to say A over sine A is equal to C over sine C. So that would be 28 over sine of A, which I don't know, is equal to 58, which was my side C, over sine of 98 degrees, because that's what we found using law of cosines. Okay. So I can cross multiply. 28 times sine of 98 degrees is equal to 58 times sine of A. That means sine of A is going to be 28 sine of 98 degrees over 58. OK, so that's 28 times sine of 98 divided by 58. And I get about 0.47 blah, 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 0.478 blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to write that in, but I'm not done because I need to find A. So A is going to be inverse sine of this. So while I've still got that in my calculator, I'm hitting the shift key and then the sine key and then the answer key to plug in that previous answer. And what I get is 28.55 blah, blah, blah. Again, I'm rounding to the nearest degree, so I would round that to 29 degrees. Now. Once we've got that, we find the third one by just using the fact that the sum of the angles in the triangle is 180. Okay. So if you had chosen to find B instead, you'd now use the sum of the angles in the triangle to find A. Okay. Either of those would work. But I'm just going to say 29 degrees plus 98 degrees plus B has to equal 180 degrees. Let's see what that is. It's 127 degrees plus B is 180 degrees. We'll subtract the 127. And so we get B is 53 degrees. So we've solved that triangle successfully. Again, I will on the exam give you the steps and the order in which to do things. I'm holding you responsible for knowing how to, what the law of sines and what the law of cosines state and how to use them when instructed to do so. But I think it is kind of neat to see the strategizing that's involved. And the key issue is if you don't know whether an angle is obtuse, you don't want to be using that in law of sines. Okay. Both because knowing its sign won't tell you whether it's acute or obtuse, and because it's not going to be in the range of inverse sine if it is obtuse. So we want to always keep in mind that the biggest angle is opposite the biggest side and sort of treat that specially.